So I'm gonna show you an experiment right now that I'm doing with my students this week. We're just starting to study circuits. And so we had a, an activity to do with uh, parallel and series circuits. And uh, at first in their at-home activity in their dorm rooms, the students were directed uh, to learn how to use the digital to analog output of the device, as well as the uh, analog input on this device of which there are six. So I'm just gonna plug a little wire that I just made from the DAC output to the analog seven or A7 input. And I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna select analog seven. I'm gonna turn on the DAC output and I've selected uh, the DAC output voltage to be two volts. And now I'm just gonna record. And so what you're seeing right now is two volts, not surprisingly, um, <clears throat> but I can select this voltage to be anything I want. It's sort of nice. So I can say, okay, I want 1.7 volts, and now you have 1.7 volts. Or I want 0.2 volts, and now I got 0.2 volts. Okay, so you have complete control over the, over the output of this device in an analog sense. And what my students did today um, was they just used this to build a simple little circuit, and I'll just show you what they did since it'll just take a second here. So they have a little breadboard, and they have a, a box of resistors, and they just made a series circuit and they, their job in the laboratory was to show that the current in both resistors of the series circuit was the same. We're just going to measure the voltages because that's faster. And so we're going to use the, the DAC output. We're going to have the voltage going out of the IELAB device to, the, to one side of this uh, 20 kilo ohm resistor. And then we're going to have uh, after that is a 10K resistor and it goes back to the ground of the iLab device. So there. And so then we can still use another wire to measure the voltage at A7. So I'm just going to plug this thing in there. And let's say we're going to measure the voltage at the top of this circuit. So we started at 2 volts at the top of the circuit. And then in the middle of the circuit between the resistors, we measure the voltage to be uh, about um, it's points, about two thirds of a volt. And then at the bottom of this thing, we measure the voltage, of course, to be zero. And then the, stu the students can use this to study this, the circuit, it's a resistive divider. They can see that the voltages scale the way they should. They can figure out the currents in these and they see that the currents are the same and so on. Okay, so that's a, a nice electricity and magnetism experiment. Um, <clears throat> You can also, of course, make RC circuits, which is something that we don't do with the students in my class because it's a little more advanced, but we will do with the engineering students. You can measure time constants and so on by turning the voltages off and on, charging, discharging a capacitor. Um, let me show you something I like a lot, which is using the high gain amplifier, which is built into this thing. It's a differential uh, DC coupled high gain amplifier with a gain of, of I believe, 1200. And you can use that to study Faraday's law. So here I just made a simple wire loop. It says one loop of wire. And I'm plugging one end of this wire into one end of this differential amplifier, the other into the other. And so we will select on the screen uh, high gain. And right now it's measuring zero because, well, you connected the two inputs to the differential amplifier. But what I can do is I have a little wee magnet here, and if I wave this magnet near this loop, you see induction. So if you look at this carefully, this is really slick. Oops, let me zoom in on this. You actually uh, see the induced field. So this is Faraday's law. So the rate of change of flux through this loop uh, induces a current in this loop that opposes the changing of the flux. And so you see sort of two features, two lobes of that one, positive and negative, every time you zoom this thing by. And so one of the experiments that we're going to do this semester is the students are going to have a competition to see who can generate the biggest induced voltage. And so that's a, a fun little experiment. The last thing I want to show you is for, for E&M measurements is how you can have students discover the right-hand rule. And so here I'm just going to take a double-A battery it's, and here's a piece of wire and I'm going to make this side positive or this side negative. So right-hand rule, the current's going to go this way. So the field is going to be pointing upward. So I'm going to put this over the magnetometer right here and we're going to see this, 
the Z component of the magnetic field, which is this one, go up and down as I just energize this one single little loop with a battery. Here is recording the magnetometer, and right now I'm recording, well, this is what all three axes looks like. That's the Earth's magnetic field you're seeing. Let me just hide everything but the Z axis right there. And so I'm just going to take this and hold it over here and there you go. I'm just energizing this little loop with a magnet and you can see the increase in the Z component toward the positive direction as I run the current through this thing and that's the direction that the right hand rule tells you. So you can have students discover the right hand rule, something else that we do.